Welcome to WP Coffee Talk. Thank you to all of our sponsors, and especially to our Espresso Level sponsors, Helix Managed WordPress Hosting, for both their sponsorship and for hosting our site, and to Expander Digital for both their sponsorship and providing SEO services to us. Now enjoy the episode. Welcome to another edition of WP Coffee Talk, where I get to talk to people all over the world about the things that they do with WordPress. Uh, we've talked to a lot of developers mm -hmm. over the last 50 something episodes and very few content creators. So I'm very excited today to be able to speak with my friend Allison yeah. about content creation and everything else that goes into working with WordPress and writing the different kind of content that you do. Yeah. So Allison, why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in a nutshell. So um, historically, I've been a copywriter, uh, which means I create content that basically sells people online in a nutshell. And I've lately been moving more into um, content marketing and strategy because I want to do more of the, the planning and the um, just more kind of awareness type content uh, for people's businesses. And I'm moving more into kind of the tech sphere of things. So that's exciting. Um, one of my newest exciting. clients is in data science, so. Well, that's cool. Yeah. One thing I like about content is learning about so many different industries. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've written for like manufacturing, tourism, economic development, like a pretty wide swath of, of things and it's, and before that, I was a journalist. Um, oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so a whole bunch of different topics. I love oh, it. Very, very cool. Absolutely. I can see why. Uh, you're good with words, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, not words. Verbal and words I'm, I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> and your last name is Smith, so you're a wordsmith even. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so show us your mug. What mug do you have today? Today, I have a WordCamp Hamilton 2018. Uh -huh. and I have one like that. <laughs> yes. I'm so proud of it. I spoke at WordCamp Hamilton last year for that. <laughs> so what was your topic? Uh, five secrets to a uh, uh, great about page. Yeah, something like that. But the essence was like, here's how to write a great a fantastic about page for a business. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome. What's in your mug tonight? What are you drinking? Uh, water, because it's, it's hot here in Niagara Falls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's hot everywhere right now, I think. <laughs> the dog um, days of summer. This is true. I'm using my Boston mug today. Ooh, so wow. my, my coworker, Jeff, brought this back from a trip to Boston over um, the 4th of July weekend that we had. And uh, so I am drinking... Okay, well, it used to be hot tea. It's been on my desk a while, so now it's, um, I'd like to call it iced tea, but it really is just tepid tea. Yeah. So, yeah. but it still, it still wets my whistle, as they say, so I'm good with that. Nice. <laughs> so, coming from journalism and writing, how did you get started in WordPress, specifically? Well, uh, the first time I started promoting myself and trying to get clients and I decided I needed a website, um, someone recommended WordPress because it's like, it's pretty easy for beginners. It's basically the best for SEO. Um, and it's really where you want to kind of get started. They had the most reliable CMS um, at the time. And I think they still do. Um, there are a few competitors out there now, uh, but WordPress, I think has more like 30, 30% plus of the web. Yeah. Um, and that's for good reason. And um, yeah, I've just, like many of your interviewees, I've fallen in love with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So like the community around it, especially. Um, any, like I've, there are a lot of CMSs out there, but I, I haven't seen another community like ours. And the community is what keeps me. Yeah, I can understand that, um, you know, wholeheartedly, especially, I mean, the community is why I have this, this, um, this podcast in the first place, because I get to talk to people who are part of the community. Uh, nobody gets paid to be on my show. Sorry. Even I don't get paid to be on my show. 
<laughs> so um, that's pretty exciting. And you are also one of the backbones of the Niagara uh, meetup, and the and you're heading up into your second WordCamp Niagara coming up yeah. soon too. Yeah, October nineteenth. Yeah. We are uh, in the midst of of organizing, um, so I'm I'm so excited. We voted for speakers today, so. Fingers crossed because I might have oversubmitted like, I don't know, maybe five talks. <laughs> I, I was like, I hope they pick at least one of them and I want to give them options. But um, yeah, yeah. Thanks I, for I, that, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, you're welcome. You're welcome. And last year I got to be your mentor for your first ever. Yes, you did. We were so, um, so lucky and so fortunate oh, to have yeah. you because like I, I had a question and even last night. I messaged you in a panic, Michelle, about your own, like, <laughs> about your own entries. 11 o'clock at night, help. And you, <laughs> Michelle, you I can't friend. find your entries. I'm like, well, check this, check the sessions and see if they're there. And you're like, Eureka. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I was like, I, I remember submitting them. And I remember you saying, yes, I got them. And then, you know, who knows what happens to things after that cyber the cyber um, gremlins came into yeah. <laughs> yeah, the little green guys. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine I'll, I'll either get a thumbs up or thumbs down email sometime over the next couple of days, I'm guessing. <laughs> I think you'll get a thumbs up. I, I would, I'm hoping, I'm hoping so. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll talk offline later. You can let me know uh, which one might have got thumbs up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so we know how you guys started in WordPress. What do you think when you look at other people's websites? Because now that you're doing more than just uh, and I use the word just um, unfairly. Now that you are doing more than writing, that you're getting beyond that into other things like organizing, um, helping people, and looking at other people's websites, what are some things that you think they overlook or don't focus enough attention on that would make those sites stronger or better? Um, I think making sure their content is updated and consistent across their site, right? Um, and also design, accessibility, all of those. But having a content style guide is key. So what, what a content style guide would, will do is keep you on track in terms of like just simple things like how do we spell, like what sort of spelling conventions do we use? Um, how is our name spelt? Um, how, how is our logo used? So it covers both kind of design and, and content written content elements. And I find, um, I find that sometimes because people, like different people are updating different pages and different people are writing articles. And before you know it, like you've got a bunch of kind of different styles happening and a bunch of different voices. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes you want different voices, but you want your brand voice to be um, what you intended it to be in the first place, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you want like a purposeful, yeah. you know, a purposeful kind of uh, progression towards, you know, building up that brand voice. And some consistency in how things are used for sure. Um, and being this close to the border, so you're just north of the border, I'm just south of the border. Yeah. If we were to collaborate on something, you would be more likely to spell color in favor with a U. And I would not even think of doing that because of just the way that we do things differently um, in Canada versus the U.S. And so those are some of the things that you really want to be able to be on the lookout for. Um, and even like simple things, right? So I don't know what your convention is. I used to be a two space after the period kind of girl. Mm -hmm. And I am now a one space after the period kind of girl. And it took a little bit of um, training and practicing to stop hitting that space bar twice. Yeah. <laughs> It does, because <laughs> it's muscle memory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it, it used to be correct because of, you know, how typewriters were used. And yes. now, like, I, I totally understand how that would be um, very hard to stop. And, uh, yeah, like, one of my clients was trying to get me to stop using my trackpad the other day and use the keyboard. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard. It's like a whole – it's like learning – basically a baby learning to <laughs> move its hands again. Yep. Um, Absolutely. I'm making yeah. a note for later. I have a question for you later and I didn't want to forget it. Uh, yeah. So, and depending on which client I'm working for, like I have a, I have a client in the States I edit for. 
So I have to follow um, the Associated Press style guide for them. And I have the Canadian Press style guide over here. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, like both, both of those books are by my bedside. <laughs> Strunk, Strunk and White is nowhere around anymore, are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the, like those styles are, yeah, they, they're, they're pretty important. Like pick one and decide. Nothing is wrong. But like, yeah, be consistent. <laughs> I agree, absolutely. Um, what's something that you wish you had known when you first started working in WordPress that you've learned since then that's made, that would have made life a little easier had you known it sooner? how willing people are um, to, to do anything um, to help, right? Like how, I wish I would have known about meetups six years ago <laughs> when, I, when I started um, kind of tinkering around with my own website. Um, if, if I'd had that information like from the start, I would have had, like I would have less gray hair than I do now and I would have a lot more of it um, <laughs> because the like even at the local level, that community is is really diverse. You have developers, you have marketers, you have social media people, and they're they're on top of their game. So if you have a question, um, chances are they can answer it, or somebody in the next town can answer it, mm -hmm. and they're all like really open and warm and just amazing. <laughs> or they answer their Facebook pings at eleven thirty at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I have been in the middle of the morning, and then when I say the middle of the morning, I mean the wee hours in the dark, uh, working on a site and, and looked online to see whose light is green that I could ping and say, do you know how to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah well, like, same. Like, when something goes wrong for me, it's always the gremlins working their magic at, like, 1130 at night. Yeah. Probably because, like, when I've decided to, let's try something. I'm like... <laughs> What could go wrong in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's often the only time I have to tinker around, like the end of the day. Okay, let's do that thing. Um, yeah. yeah, that's 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 a bad habit I'm trying to break. <laughs> there's, there's a reason they say don't feed them after midnight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite WordCamp or Word or WordPress meetup moments, like something that just kind of really made a difference for you? Um, does this apply to like camps or talks or like meetups or anything? Any of any of the above. Yep. Okay. Um, I love the after parties <laughs> at yeah. WordCamps. They are like they're some of the greatest opportunities to just meet people um, either for the first time or again and kind of see what they're about, you know, like it's a relaxed environment. Um, there's, there's really, and it's kind of a camaraderie there, right? Um, just like, I've walked up to people in that, <laughs> in that context where like, I never would have walked up to them before in any other context. Um, mm -hmm. but because you have that shared, like communal, almost like tribal, like, you know, recognition among each other. Mm -hmm. um, like, hey, you're wearing a wapu, <laughs> or you're wearing a, <laughs> you're, you know, you're wearing a, a lanyard. Um, yeah. Let's, let's chat. Um, there, there's a W on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, the hallway track is amazing. Um, meetups are cool because they're at coffee shops. They're very comfy and like, and friendly and um, you get answers to your questions. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm also a big fan. I love talks. I love sitting in talks. I love learning from people, of course. But the networking and the camaraderie that comes with the after parties and the hallway track and all of that stuff, I'm 100% all about it. And the uh, the happiness bar. Yeah. So if I'm at a camp and there's no happiness bar, I'm a little less happy. I'm not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> I took advantage of the happiness bar at the last word camp Hamilton in June um, of this year. And I was, um, had a, had a challenge and I said, can you help me out? It was Adam Warner who was running it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so he like, he got me to the point where like I could talk to my host and say, okay, this is the language I'm supposed to use. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like when somebody says, it's like when, when you're a kid and they say, you say, how do you spell whatever? And they say, look in the dictionary. You're like, I can't look in the dictionary. I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> There's a silent P in there. I don't know where to go. <laughs> I don't know what to ask the host. You have to tell me how to ask them what I need. So yeah. Yeah. I completely yeah. understand that. I yeah. completely understand that. <laughs> So tell us some of what your process is when you're working with a new customer. So somebody comes to you and they're in a field that maybe you are less familiar with. How do you accumulate um, content? What do you do exactly to help them with their so website? So what I do is have um, what we call a discovery call to kind of kick things off and see where they're at. Do they have existing content? Um, do they have like no website at all? Are they revamping their 10 year old site? Um, <laughs> the, there's a lot of questions in terms of what the structure of the project is. Um, are they bringing me in to work like directly client to consultant? Um, am I being brought on as kind of a subcontractor, um, like by an agency, um, love agencies, <laughs> love working with agencies, um, mm -hmm. or like, am I collaborating with a designer? So I, like the process is pretty much um, pretty much the same either way. It's just like when I when I talk to people, and then um, I love going on site at companies actually, and like having those what I call like almost boardroom table conversations or kitchen table conversations, where I sit down and like really get to know them. Like yeah. what makes them tick? What is their why? Um, why do they need this site? And what are they doing in business? Um, you know. It's, it's a competitive business world out there. Like, why are they in it? Yeah. Is, that, is that kind of how you get their voice too? So yeah. like, you can't write in your voice right. or something else. You have to be able to write in theirs. So I imagine some of those conversations are what lead that. Yeah. So I ask them both about like their current um, marketing situation. Like, are they happy with it? Um, <laughs> can they give me examples? Um, I ask for... Um, like what sort of words are banned or like <laughs> what sort of words are a no-go for you? Um, and what sort of like, what's your vernacular in terms of how you've been um, publishing content um, up to now? Um, like what sort of language do you use? Um, mm -hmm. And I have like a list of like 40 questions <laughs> that I go through with them. That's basically my Bible. It's like 40 questions copywriters should ask every, every project. And that's harder. That's harder than eHarmony. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a high. It's a high entry point. Yeah, because I want to know that they're they're ready to do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if if they're not, like, if they're not ready um, to kind of explain to me, like, I I kind of if I'm really kind of tackling their topic for a new for a new kind of time or if I'm tackling it for the first time, I'm not afraid to say like, okay, explain this to me like I'm six. <laughs> start, right. start at the bottom and like break it down for me. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a, there's a kind of saying that if you can't explain something to a six-year-old, you know, and have them understand or your mom or anybody outside the industry, um, right. you, you don't know it enough yet. Like you don't know where what your mission or like where you're going is yet like so I have them explain like what they do and their intent and um the purpose behind their marketing yeah um it's <laughs> it, there's, a, there's a whole like few dozen questions in there <laughs> I'm sure there are and then also you have to think about keywords right so you have to think about um uh, what are the important um organic type keywords that you're going and how you're going to include those yeah yeah kind of what their strategy is in terms of um what are your goals for your site is a huge one um mm -hmm. and I try I try to keep it to like between one and three goals because any more than that is is a lot of expectation to <laughs> to put on your content <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah just just in terms of having like a like a smart goal right like specific like specific there's a there's a few more letters in there <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> the right, like the right call to action even right like yeah. where how are you focusing on it good calls to action um wh what do you want people to do after they look at your like look at your about page um is a is a big one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Where, where are you funneling people from your homepage? Yeah. Right. And are you helping people with social media too? Or are you strictly working with their websites or? I like to stick to um, websites and kind of content um, that's published on websites like blog posts, articles. Um, I'm sure I'm going to be tackling eBooks and, and stuff like that and mm -hmm. helping them repurpose their content on site. Um, there are like people so much smarter than me in social media who specialize in that stuff. And uh, I'm the strategy too really encompasses like promotion. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I social media managers are they're smart people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, That's and I I can I can do like I do my own social. So I'm mm -hmm. familiar with it. I know what's going on, but like just my experience has been in, has been in copywriting content generation. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of like pick your strength and stay within that area so that you can become stronger and kind of rule the roost as far as that, that kind of thing goes. <laughs> yeah. And go with it. Like if, if I had to subcontract to a social media manager or if I had to collaborate with one, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We could, we could for sure learn from each other. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I had a question. What was it? Something you said something that made me think of like, oh, ask her this next. And of course, I've already forgotten it. Um, but anyway, so, oh, I know I was going to ask you. So when somebody says, this is where we've been, but we completely want to pivot and we want to change our voice. We want to change. Is that easier or more difficult to do? It depends on how how much they flesh that out and how much they've thought about it um, mm -hmm. and how much, how much they can really bring home what they want their voice to be about. Um, if they can really describe what their mission is and where they're going and what their why is behind that, and like mm -hmm. why they're pivoting. Um, and if I can talk to like any new clients they might have in that area and get their perspective, like that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love talking to clients, clients. <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah you get a whole new perspective on um on people's services and how they help mm -hmm. how they help their customers right right because after all the website is not for your client it's for their clients yeah and that that's what i have to kind of keep them focused on a lot mm -hmm. is like um yeah like the language and the the kind of branding and kind of the the goal of the website has to has to not just be like about your business goals. It has to be, has to be like a problem solver for your clients, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has to no, bring, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like the entire reason your yeah. audience is on your website is because they're looking for an answer. Yeah. You're trying to satisfy their pain point. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I, I think, you know, I write a lot to you, but I don't do a lot of the content. I don't do any content writing for other people and that kind of thing. Um, where it really is ghostwriting. So you're putting lots of content out there without your name on it. So yeah. like when you, when you were in journalism, you got to own it. Yeah. You know, it was a great part of <laughs> being in journalism. Seeing does, my name in print. Does it hurt sometimes to see somebody else's name associated with the words you've written? I've done a little bit of ghost writing lately and it's, it's a whole new kind of feeling seeing their, seeing their content posted um, by like the mayor of, of a city. And yeah. being like, this is a really good piece. <laughs> I wish I wish people knew I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and being like, wow, you know, the mayor read that piece. That's amazing. And you yeah. do a little like you do a little secret happy dance, <laughs> rather yeah. than like seeing your name. Um, I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but rather than seeing your name on a stack of papers in the office. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> Going into the office on, on a, on a Monday. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a different feeling. I don't know if it's like more, like more sad or something. I've gotten used to it mm -hmm. um, because I can always get testimonials mm. and what I've, what I've tried to keep doing with varying success is keep writing my own content mm -hmm. um, to publish on my own site. <laughs> You could put your own name on that one, man. Yeah, and, and put my own name on things. And I want to do more guest posting, so get my yeah. name out there. Yeah. 
So I'm on the WordCamp US team this year, mm -hmm. and I've been writing a lot of content for the WordCamp US site. And of course, all of them just say it's published by WordCamp US. It's like, I, it's like, I, I send it, <laughs> I send a link to my mom. I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Print it and put it on the fridge, mom, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody like, else knows that that page was mine but I wrote that <laughs> yeah there have been days when I finished a project and you know it, it, it the the website launches and I I just want to print out the pages and take them home and paste like put them on my parents refrigerator like exactly. this is what I do now <laughs> exactly remember when I used to put the finger painting up there well now it's yeah. this <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so funny um is there anything else you want to tell us about like what you do? Tell us a little bit about the um, WordCamp experience because you guys just had your first one last year. Right. Last year, it was a complete whirlwind. Oh, we were so lucky to have you. It was, oh. it was <laughs> I, don't, I don't have words for last year. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. Um, and people were so, uh, <laughs> so understanding. <laughs> So it's like so warm and like so so happy that we were having our first one. We ended up on the on the same weekend as WordCamp Montreal too. <laughs> yeah, that was that was unfortunate. Sometimes that's what happens when you're working with universities and things like that. Yeah, and I wanted to be there for you, but I also didn't want to hover and mother over you. Yeah, so I actually went to WordCamp Montreal. I kept texting you over the weekend. How's it going? Yeah, and we kept cheering you on because I want like one of the things I. I really want to make sure of in the WordPress community is that like we we realize that our mentors need have needs too right and we keep like we keep propping them up right we keep pushing them towards what they want to do like so that they are fu are, are fulfilled right like yeah. um and I think that really has to be like a top like as much as it's a it's a top down mentoring thing it really has to be um support from the bottom up too Mm -hmm. So um, that's being exchanged and, you know, good things happen and people, everybody feels happy and fulfilled and like people are cheering for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I've been, of course, everybody I've mentored has thanked me, but you are the only camp that's ever thanked me publicly yeah. through social media and tweeting. And I was just like pickled, pickled tink, tickled <laughs> pink that, that you did that. And it really, I actually teared up a little bit. I was like, that was just so cool that yeah. you think publicly. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I have a very soft spot in my heart for you guys. I can't wait to be at your WordCamp this year. Oh, we can't wait for you to be here. Yay. It's gonna yeah, be you got us through like a huge, such a huge crunch time last year. Yeah. Eternally grateful for that. Oh, it's, it was a pleasure. Like, it's been a, it's been a bit more calm. We know Good. like it's our second time around. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure there's, I'm sure something's going to go wrong, but we're, we're pretty good. <laughs> We've you been can pretty, roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first time is frenetic because everything is new. Yeah. But yeah. Once you've got it under your belt that you're like, Hey, we got this. Yeah. Everything is new. And like, people are asking you questions. People are, <laughs> and they're expecting answers. <laughs> Cause you're the expert now. <laughs> or, or like people are like emailing you and like, Oh, Allison will have the answer. She like rightfully like expecting, Oh, she's an organizer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you just kind of like you just kind of, you do your best but it's it's a mm -hmm. mind trip yeah <laughs> now cor correct me if I'm wrong but you are slightly more introverted than I am yes <laughs> <laughs> a little bit yeah <laughs> just a tad but you've really put yourself out there in the last few years with WordPress and speaking organizing um, how does it feel to step outside your comfort zone like that it's, um, it's uncomfortable. I'll give you that. It's, uh, but it's something I, I really need to do if I'm going to grow. Um, yeah. In the last four years or so, I've, I've, I feel like the community has like pulled me, um, pulled me into my potential so much. Uh, that's one of the great things about being part of the WordPress community is that like you, you end up, um, interacting with people and through that like you become a little a little more of you know who you should be and a little you recognize those things in yourself that you wouldn't have necessarily recognized on your own and mm -hmm. you see other people um, totally regular people doing this stuff and you like it becomes possible for you right and somebody mm -hmm. says hey you should do this <laughs> exactly. and the first time you hear it like you think they're crazy and then, you know, the fifth time you hear it, you're, you're coming around to, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I can help out a little bit. 
and then <laughs> and then you get like kind of brought in and um you you just have some of those moments where like a little more down the line you know it's you know you find yourself um speaking and guesting on podcasts and organizing camps and like all yeah. from like attending one meetup <laughs> yeah and and then people like that you know you from before like your mother and things like are are you for real? Are you really yeah. doing these things? Because this doesn't feel like you, but it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this year, this summer, I um, got myself some branding, like business shots um, mm -hmm. for my website and social media. And that was like, that was a stretch. Like these to totally normal things that aren't a stretch for really anybody else, I feel like, and are a stretch for me, but are incredibly important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happening this year. Yeah. That's wonderful. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. That's awesome. I, um, I'm going to move into our rapid fire. I have a tickle in my throat. Hold on. <laughs> it always happens. It's allergy season. If, I don't know when this is going to air exactly, but right now it's mid-August, and in Rochester, New York, it's not fun. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> my goodness, what are two or three must-have plugins that you recommend to people when they're building their own website? Um, definitely uh, WordFence. WordFence is a security plugin that will basically take care of all that for you. Um, and like you can block entire countries <laughs> from seeing your website. It's fun. It's like all this power in your hands. <laughs> and also, it, it is fun. <laughs> keeps your website safe, right? From all those nasty, all the nasty things out there. Um, and the there hackers. are a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can, you can block IP addresses. You can, you can do all sorts of stuff with WordFence. Um, and I don't think I've even explored it all, but yeah, it's like a must have security plugin and I go for the premium one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any uh, others you recommend? I'm just, I'm just trying out, um, Beaver Builder because mm -hmm. <laughs> Previously, I was just working in like the classic editor and like with a theme. Um, but every time I revamp my website, I, I pull some hair out and I cry a few tears and like, you know, and by the time, by the end of the thing, I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm satisfied. And you know, that was like yeah. a mountain. I, I enjoyed climbing. I lied to myself <laughs> about it. <laughs> oh yeah. I should do that I again. <laughs> and I just don't have the time to do that anymore and beaver builder looked really like they have amazing templates for all different types of things yeah mm -hmm. and um just like landing pages and about pages and wow those those actually look really good <laughs> and nice it's just drag you. and drop style thing yeah um so that and uh yoast there are a few seo plugins out there um right now but um I'm sticking with Yoast, particularly because uh, I know what it's about and, you know, I, I know how it works. I'm comfortable with it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, th that's been like a, like a go-to for me. Yeah. Yeah. I like all of the ones you named. Those are all yeah. good for me too. I, yeah. I, I use them all. Yeah. At any point in your WordPress journey, <clears throat> whether it was an official relationship or kind of a looking up to somebody or they took you under their wing kind of thing, have you had a mentor and who was it? Um, well, in terms of organizing and, and camps and kind of watching, like watching, you know, what um, kind of like role model wise, um, I think you have been one for me. Oh, well, thank you. I, yeah. I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> that is. Um, and just in terms of like organizing camp for the first time, and like here's your answers to all your questions. You're so totally like unflappable, and like uh -oh. always kind of sunny, and like, <laughs> or at least you appear, you appear unflappable. Like very like, calming. Like all right, whatever my problem is, like. <laughs> Michelle is gonna have answers for me. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna laugh with me about it. It'll be okay. Well, I do flap on occasion. <laughs> my my, t my pillow has seen its share of tears, but yes, yeah. I, there's always a solution to everything. Sometimes it's not the easiest, but there's always a way through. 
Yeah. And like the the person who kind of started our meetups, he's not in the he's not as really involved in the community anymore. But um, I have to pay homage to uh, Chris Ross. Mm -hmm. um, I met him at WordCamp uh, Hamilton 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, so we met and a few months later, I think I went to a meetup and he, um, he kind of handed the community organizing thing down to uh, me and uh, myself and Wendy uh, Marshall, who's my mm -hmm. WordCamp co-organizer. And uh, he was amazing too in terms of um, development questions and like, what do I do when, you know, <laughs> yeah. what do I do about WordFence? And like, he, he recommended WordFence to me and um, he gave me the idea to talk at like, our meetup for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, he can pretty much talk about anything like kind of off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, he can. and he's got a great sense of humor. Great sense of humor, hilarious. Um, and so he was he was a great introduction to like what meetups were all about. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. He he likes to tease me about how I my my um I don't hear it, but he likes to tease me about my accent, my Rochester accent. So <laughs> that's funny. And I and I think he at some point was going to write a uh, word camp talk for me to sing. And yeah, right. 2017. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was, I think, to the tune of the modern major general from the <laughs> Pirates of Penzance. Yeah. And let's just say I'm glad that that went to the by the wayside because that would have been a little yeah. <laughs> out there. It would have been a little out there. That on a, on, a, on a call once with us. We um, did a video call. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Those were good times. Those were good times. So there's more good times to be had for sure. Yeah. Um, so not mentioning anybody that you've already mentioned, who is somebody else in the WordPress community that you admire and why? I saw this question like in your, in your list of questions and I was mm -hmm. like, there are, there are so many more. There are, there's like Andy McElwain, who's amazing at, um, content and content wrangling and basically anything around content. Mm -hmm. Um, he's a, he's a huge, um, community organizer and he's, a He's a great speaker too. I always love his talks. Mm -hmm. um, lots of knowledge around um, community building and like newspapers and um, different different types of content. Um, Bridget Willard, mm -hmm. great person. Um, somebody I look up to in terms of like marketing and um, how to engage online. Um, and uh, <sighs> Uh, Adam Warner, um, mm -hmm. I've like, kind of run into him at like different um, different iterations of WordCamp Hamilton over the years. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's always been like really kind and um, answered like all my questions and everything. Everybody has. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of anybody I've I've really walked up to who's who hasn't done that for me. <laughs> Get um, away from me, kid! You're bothering me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're on my WordPress lawn. Keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot of really good people. Uh, it's hard to name just one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, Shanta and Shanta in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's awesome. Kiara Howe, who you've already had on. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's like five. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's all good. I love the shout outs. I love giving praise where praise is due and paying homage to the people who have, have been so helpful along the way, for sure. Yeah. What's something that you'd like to learn in WordPress that you haven't tackled yet? Um, more in terms of accessibility. Mm. Yeah, uh, accessible design and um, more in terms of like user experience. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fascinated by that stuff. I just, I just haven't had the time to like really explore deeply yet mm -hmm. and accessibility is is such a I, I know the basics and like i you know how to how to make a website accessible and um in terms of um just like best practices and fundamentals but there's so much involved in that and it's so mm -hmm. nuanced and um there's there's so much like there are so many amazing people who are focused on accessibility as well mm -hmm. and, um kind of giving those, um, giving that part of the, actually giving a voice to that need, right? 
um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's huge and it's growing. And like, you always want your content to be as accessible to as many people as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm working right now to get as many of the WP Coffee Talks close captioned as possible. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm looking for more sponsors is so that I could pay people to do that uh, yeah. so that we can make sure that anybody who is deaf or hard of hearing can understand what's going on and be able to read that. So I'm working on that myself for WP Coffee Talk. One of the things I tweeted out this last weekend, you may or may not have seen it, I don't recall, um, if you interacted with the particular tweet, because I've been tweeting a lot lately. But as I was leaving um, the university in Montreal, I went to push the, um, the handicap button to open the doors because some people don't know, I walk with a cane a lot of the time, especially at word camps when I'm doing a lot of walking. And on the same panel, five inches apart from each other was the fire alarm. And just below that was this giant button to push for mm -hmm. opening the doors. And I, I took a picture of it and um, I tweeted it with, you, with you know, basically UX fail and what could go wrong. <laughs> It's, you got accessibility, you got user experience, and yet it still is this giant fail. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it was funny. There, there are so like there's so there's so many memes like that. So many memes I haven't seen yet. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, take a look at my Twitter account from last weekend. It's a scroll yeah. a bit, but it was yeah. a good one. It was a good one. Um, what is one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made, and what did you learn from it? <laughs> there are so many, um, but eventually. <laughs> The most, um, probably the most um, terrifying ones are the ones I've made where um, I didn't, um, I didn't back up my site before I started futzing around with it. So, mm -hmm. and I, or I didn't do something, um, I, for some reason I was playing around on my, on a live, like, production site and, like, didn't, like, didn't log into my staging site. And like thought I'd be okay because I was only changing one thing, and then like <laughs> something goes wrong, and then and then like you just have that moment where like you can you can feel like, the hair start to rise on your neck, and your face gets all red, your back starts sweating, <laughs> your, your like, eyes start to sting. <laughs> help, help! And like the worst thing about about that is um, the ability to articulate your problems decreases as your anxiety increases <laughs> as the anxiety increases and yeah. the apparent um like the gravity of your mistake hits home so yeah. like the first thing uh the first thing one of like your smarter like developer or designer friends is going to want to know is what did you do <laughs> you're like, like i don't know <laughs> What I pushed something. <laughs> what did you click? What menu were you in? What did that dialog box, what, did, what exactly did it say? And you're like, I don't, I don't know, just, just fix it. Just, just, get my, just get me out of the white screen. I'm like, okay, but to do that. <laughs> so that and um, eventually I found, um, I learned always, always work on a staging site. Um, always no matter what changes you're making, and then just push it. It's worth it. And uh, have a login page that's different, like use a plugin that you can have a secret login page to reduce the, the chances of something bad happening and you know mm -hmm. somebody getting into your site that shouldn't be in there. Um, and another one I hear is people typing their content directly into the editor space and losing it for some reason. Yeah. So you want to type your content um, into a text editor and then paste it over, right? Because if, mm -hmm. if something goes awry, you still have that content in another, like in a whole other program. Um, yeah. So don't create your content in the window, please. Because most of the time it will auto save, but that one time it doesn't and you came up with like the best sentence ever or the best way to say something, that is the time that it will just, have a blip or something, mm -hmm. um, or or Gutenberg will. I don't mean to hit on Gutenberg, but or Gutenberg will. Something will happen with it, yeah. <laughs> and you'll never see those words again. <laughs> yes, and you won't remember exactly how you said it, and you won't. Yeah. You'll be so mad. Yeah. Yeah. What's your What's your proudest WordPress moment? Probably speaking last year at WordCamp Hamilton, um, seeing my name on the 
like on the board of of talks was a huge like was a huge moment like i'm really doing this my name is on the board like there's no <laughs> there's there's no you're freaking out and not doing it now i mean it's there so there's no turning back <laughs> <laughs> and just thinking like i'm i'm really not any different than anybody else mm-hmm. who gets up there and talks and like mm-hmm. the more i do that the more it sinks in um so it's you know it's like anything else like the more you do something the less uncomfortable it gets um, absolutely yeah so i I'm, I'm really hoping to have like more proud wordpress moments guesting on more podcasts <laughs> that's awesome i love it if you weren't a writer and working in web, so I'm going to take both of those things off the table, what's another career that you might like to attempt? I was thinking about this last night and a uh, dog walker slash sitter came to mind. I love dogs. Um, I love all breeds of dogs. <laughs> That's awesome. And for, for the most part, they love me. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. And um, just to like, just to be able to, interact with them and like take them for walks every day and like kind of kind of make sure they're fed and happy and not lonely would be like the most amazing position like ever like there's a there's a gif of um some lady she's some movie star and she's got like a trunk full of dogs and (laughs) um it's like this is where i see myself in 10 years and she's like (laughs) pointing to the back of the truck and laughing and like that's really yeah that's you. All the dogs. Yeah. When I retire, I want to have like a trunk full of um, like golden retrievers or like border collies and just like. <laughs> I want all the dogs. Yeah. All the dogs everywhere. I love it. Your that's and nobody, nobody has given me that answer yet. So that's a good one. I like it. Nice. Um, what's something on your bucket list besides owning all the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> um, traveling. Mm. I want to mm-hmm. travel. I, I'd love to travel and, and write about word camps and cover word camps for, for someone um, or just even myself. And, um, and specifically going to New York and seeing everything New York. I love the idea of it. New York City? Yeah, going to the big yeah. city. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It is a, it's a very interesting place for sure. Yeah. Um, and like, there are so many word camps, like in the States, maybe going to word camp US. Um, so many I haven't been to yet. I've really Mm -hmm. only been to like the super local ones. Hmm. Yeah. So So, it's time to travel. Yeah. (laughs) Show us or tell us about one of the hidden talents that you have that the WordPress community might not know about. (laughs) Um... I'm not sure if it's a hidden talent anymore. I'm not sure if I should try it. But when I was a little kid, I could, um, the way I would like entertain my friends, I was a pretty awkward kid, I was pretty quiet, but like the way I would kind of avoid them teasing me or like, is kind of like make a spectacle of myself <laughs> at the lunchroom table. <laughs> so I would hold my breath until my face got like super red, <laughs> like Red, as red as the couch, like, behind you, almost. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Yeah, and people were like, wow, that is a really cool town. This was when I was, like, probably 10. <laughs> so, like, the bar was pretty low. And, like, <laughs> people would actually become worried about me, and then, you know, and then whatever they had in their heads to tease me about would stop. That's what I noticed. <laughs> like, it's a diversion tactic, right? So, like, I was making, she's making, you know, a clown of herself. No, that's funny. You know, I hope she doesn't pass out, was I... <laughs> I think the line of thinking there, they're like, wow, that's really cool. And like, that was my thing at lunch. <laughs> and I, just as you asked me that, I remembered. Do you, do you remember in Willy Wonka, like, Violet, you're turning Violet. Yeah. <laughs> you could be like, Carmen, you're turning Carmine. Yeah. <laughs> I should try it again at the next word camp and, like, see yeah. it. <laughs> Let's, Let's not... T- Let's let's not do it on the podcast in case you do pass out and I'm like I am two hours away. I can't. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. We'll do it in a controlled environment. There you go, <laughs> with paramedics standing by. Yeah. <laughs> Tell everybody how they can find you. Um, your website, social media. My website is under construction, but it's the, there's a landing page there, so it's at aesmithcontent.com. 
on Twitter, you can find me at A.E. Smith Content. And on Instagram, you can find me at A.E. Smith Content. Um, Look at that. I love when you can get them all to match up like that. Yeah, I've been, like, I've been planning for a while. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Um, I'm just, just kind of starting on Facebook. I've been kind of honing my Instagram presence. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I'm on, I'm on Twitter. I'm on all the things. That's fantastic. All the dogs, all the things. Yeah. <laughs> all the social media. Well, I look forward to seeing you at WordCamp and, uh, up in that WordCamp Niagara. I, it's a beautiful time of year up there. I, the, just the drive from Rochester to there, the leaves are gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, I might, you know, have a little wine while I'm up there. It is wine country. So. Yeah, definitely. All the wine. I'm all partially wine. daiquiris, but the wine is superb up here. It and is, I'm not it. just plugging Niagara. That is true. We've won awards. <laughs> yeah, we um, and the Finger Lakes area here is is very much the same. I think we have yeah. very similar similar grapes being grown throughout the area. But the Niagara wine is it's it's delicious, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Big hugs, and I think I'm going to see yeah. you at Camp Rochester. Hopefully, you'll make it down here. Yeah, I'm um, crossing my fingers. I I really want to go. Um, you guys are like less than eight weeks out. I was looking at yeah. the calendar the other day and I was like, wow, they're, they're coming up on it. Yeah. It's getting yeah. exciting for sure. And I'm, and I'm not on the organizing team anymore, yeah. which I, you know, so I, I got a, up and running for a few years and now it's somebody else's turn. So mm, nice. it's all good. All good. Yep. So, so thank you very much. Enjoy the rest yeah. of your evening. Goodbye everybody out in uh, coffee talk land and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. WP coffee talk with Michelle Frechette is a proud supporter of WP and Up, whose mission is to support and promote positive mental health within the WordPress community. Visit their website at wpandup.org.